You're listening to CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and how we do it, call toll-free 1-866-928-3310. And we'll send you out a no-obligation information kit absolutely free. 866-928-3310. The CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast is now on Stitcher. Listen to us on your iPhone, Android phones, BlackBerry, and WebOS phones. Stitcher is smart radio for your phone. Find it in your app store or at Stitcher.com. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. Are you ready, Steve? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, Bert. Well, all right, fellas. But it's go. You're listening to CFRN, the Christian Financial Radio Network. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Over 85,000 titles. Choose from mystery, romance, religion, science, technology, business, New York Times bestsellers, even children's books. You name it, Audible has it. With 85,000 titles to choose from, you're sure to find the perfect audiobook for yourself or to give as a gift, and it's absolutely free. Just point your browser to audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. That's audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. And become a part of the audiobook revolution by downloading your free audiobook today. audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Hey, trader, want to get rich quick? Well, good luck with that. If, on the other hand, you actually want to learn how to trade, the place to be is www.cfrn.net. Tune in Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern, for our daily devotional, and then spend the next three hours learning how it's done for professional traders who actually trade for a living. That's www.cfrn.net. Every trading day from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. Good afternoon, traders, and welcome back to the CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast. This is the daily broadcast of Indeterminate Length, where we discuss all things E-Mini, along with some really big ideas on the finer points of trading gold, bonds, crude, sugar, the euro, and even T-bills. Joining us today from our studios in Boston, Mr. Michael Bork. From our trading desk in Chicago, Mr. Burton Schlichter. Now, to get things started, let's go to our host and founder in Studio A, overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Here's Dwayne. Good afternoon. Welcome back. Today is Wednesday, 28th day of August, 2019. Thanks so much for joining us, whoever you are, wherever you are. We're just glad to have you right here, right now. I don't have a chart up, but I will. Lickety split, technical term. There we go. Daily chart, S&P 500 E-mini futures. If you can't see the chart, go to our homepage at CFRN.net. On the right-hand side of the page, click the big microphone, follow the instructions, You'll be registered in about 30 seconds, and that will give you one-click access to the show each and every day. On the days you're out of the office, away from the desktop, not to worry. Want to join the show? Just point a browser, any internet-connected browser, PC, Mac, tablet, cell phone, you name it. Just point it to youtube.com slash cfrn slash live. There you will find a real-time simulcast of the show as it unfolds, right before your very eyes, almost as if by magic. 
and uh, it's all brought to you by the good folks at YouTube. Thanks, YouTube. All right. So, where are we on this daily chart of the S&P 500 even futures? Last major event, bearish cross back on August 5th, 6th. Leg and a retracement to the BBC. Leg and a retracement to the BBC. Leg and here we go. There's yesterday, here's today. Up here, you can see how we consolidated one, two, three, four, five sessions, four and a half sessions on the pullback to the BBC at the BBC, which we expect to be good resistance until it isn't. Just like we expect it to be good support until it isn't. When it isn't, looks like that. And when it isn't, looks like that. But so far, it looks like that. Question, we're consolidating three sessions now. This is number three at the CFMA1, which is red and falling. Let's peek down here, cycle indicator. Look at that. That's about as low as she can go. Below the 50 yard line, red, just laying flat across the bottom of the slingshot. If we don't close any higher than where we are today, on Globex open tonight, the high probability move continues to be right here. Now, if we pop up to the BBC before the close of this session, or early in the Asian session tonight, this is still the next high probability move. For that to change from a daily perspective, we have to see a close above the BBC, an open above the BBC, followed by a close above the BBC, and then this narrative changes, okay? All right, let me give you the numbers real quick from around the world. First, let me give you just a little bit of news. Is Bitcoin ready for a massive move? Three indicators suggest maybe. Question, is 10,000 the new 1,000 for Bitcoin price? A popular Bitcoin market analyst uh, who goes by the name of Plan B tweeted earlier this month, Bitcoin's three month struggle to break the magical 10,000 feels like the 2017 struggle to break 1,000. We all remember that, right? It's a couple years ago. And we all know what came next. Is past performance any indication of future results? <clears throat> no, that's all we got to go on. Now, the same question appears to be on the minds of many investors and the uber bullish sentiment of the previous two months seems to be taking a hit as traders wonder, why isn't Bitcoin price exploding as the digital asset was supposed to function as a store of value hedge against market volatility. Why aren't alts proving 100% plus gains to kick off a new alt season since Bitcoin is consolidating and slowly becoming bearish? And why haven't we seen a slow roll rally right after the Bach announcement of its platform launch next month. Up until January 2nd of 2017, Bitcoin had traded below $1,000 for 1,124 days. Once above 1,000, the following $1,000 hurdles were leapt over at an ever quickening pace. The number of days between 1,000 and 2,000 was reduced to just 23 days. All right, let me, let me just give you that again, because this is kind of a big deal. Once above 1,000, or up until January 2nd, 2017, Bitcoin traded below 1,000 for 1,124 days. The amount of time it took it to go from 1,000 to $2,000 <clears> per coin was reduced to just 23 days. By the, bit, by the time Bitcoin price reached 5,000, 
the number of days it took to secure another $1,000 gain dropped to 10. As of right now, Bitcoin has spent the past two weeks in a struggle to stay above $10,000, and traders like Mr. Plan B are beginning to wonder if 10,000 is the new 1,000. We talked and talked on the show here about the importance of this psychological $10,000 mark. We said we thought we would see price jockey back and forth, above and below, above and below, but there would come a time when the pullback to 10K held, really held. And when that happens, I believe the distance between 10,000 and 20,000 may be calculated not in months or weeks, possibly in days. More experienced traders, familiar with Bitcoin's trading history and character, will advise everybody to just be calm. But that's not enough uh, to allay the worries of those who might have purchased Bitcoin somewhere between 12,900 down to 11,500, especially if there's a possibility that Bitcoin could enter a prolonged accumulation phase that could last until the first quarter of 2020. Sentiment has been proven to play a significant role in Bitcoin price action and Plan B is perhaps onto something. As previously reported, investor sentiment is measured by the Crypto Fear and Greed Index, the CFGI, and multiple hedge funds, firms, and crypto analysts across the sector draw insight from the index. We'll take a look at that chart in the show today. Now, the index maps investor sentiment on a scale of 1 to 100, where 1 represents investors' sense of doom and 100 reflects sheer optimism and greed. Remember Greed? What was it, in the 80s? What was the movie? Was it Wall Street? Greed is good? We know that's yeah. not true, but yeah. Yeah, was that the movie? All right. Yeah. yeah what was, was that guy's name? Uh, Michael Gordon Douglas. Gordon Gecko. Gordon Gecko. Gordon Gecko, played by Michael Douglas, yeah. According to the creators, a low reading tends to represent buying opportunities, and high readings could be a sign that a correction is in store. As of August 22nd, the indicator had dropped to 5, the lowest level measured since December of 2018. Currently, the CFGI stands at 30, which is closer to fear than greed, which is an improvement over last week's reading of 11, which is considered extreme fear. Given that Bitcoin against the U.S. dollar has plotted lower highs and lower lows as volume dries up and the trading range tightens near the all-important $10,000 mark, it seems sensible to infer that traders are growing increasingly reluctant to take a position as many are afraid support at $10,000 will finally give and eventually lead to a new low below $9,000. Obviously, sentiment is not the singular driver of any asset's price action, and some discussion of Bitcoin's technical setup and current market structure is required. I want to bring up that chart, that graph. I'm going to show that to you later in the show. Let me just go uh, to the numbers right here, right now. These will be the cash markets from around the world. We'll go to Michael for a recap. Hey, Valerie, did you check with... Uh, uh, Garrett yesterday to find out if he's planning to come on today. Today's Wednesday, you guys, and Garrett does visit with us uh, on some Wednesdays. John's going to come on a little bit early today, I think, in the event that Warren, Garrett does come on. John's got some things he really wants to share with you, so stay tuned for that. All right, right now, the Dow is up 195 points. NASDAQ is up 26 S&P 500 is up 15, uh, Russell 2000 up 20. Uh, the mover shaker there would be the Russell, which is up over one and a quarter percent. In second place would be the Dow, which is up about three quarters of one percent. In the commodity basket, crude oil inventories today up 97 cents, trading 55.90 last. That's a gain of one and three quarter percent. Gold, on the other hand, taking a breather, down $4.60, trading 
15, 47, 20 last. In Asian markets at the close, the Nikkei posted a gain of 23 points, Shanghai dropped 8, and the Hang Seng finished the session down 48. In the European markets at the close, FTSE posted a gain of 25, the DAX lost 29, and the CAC dropped 18. That gives us a mixed day in Asia, a mixed day in the UK. So far, it is a big green radio Wednesday here in the US of A. Let's go to Michael, get a recap of what happened in the room this morning. I'll be back, we'll talk to John, possibly Garrett. We'll go over all the concierge trade alerts, the Logic 247 alerts, everything that's happened so far this week. We did launch an Improp, Improp 2, an Improp 2 trial. Didn't have a trial planned this week for Logic 247, but a series of events that unfolded yesterday in the discussion group uh, led me to determine that there was a great need for us to have a trial. And there's a post, and you can go to the discussion group, and you can read all about it. Uh, good thing, good thing. And so if you have never taken the trial, that's one every six months. Be fair, leave, leave room for other people. Once every six months, if you've not taken that trial, Michael's going to show you here in a minute, but let me just say it, eminitrainingschool.com. That's where you start the journey. All right, let me drag this up. Click this. Mute my mic, and it's all yours. Okay. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Wednesday, the 28th day of August, 2019. I believe it. It's the 28th day of August already. All right. So if you have not taken a free trial with us, go to the homepage at CFRN.net. In the right-hand column, it says five-day free trial, apply.cfrn.net. If you click on that, it will bring you to this page, eminitrainingschool.com. Now you can go directly to this page. Just go to eminitrainingschool.com. Um, all we ask for is your name, your email, and your phone number. You can tell us the biggest trading challenge if you choose to, so we can tailor one-on-one -on -one training specifically for you. Hit the send button and you'll be sent a confirmation link. You must click the confirmation link, okay? Because we don't know you took the trial if you don't click that confirmation link, all right? And that's all you gotta do to take the free trial. Now, the spreadsheet. If you're gonna read the spreadsheet, you could read all the CFTC risk disclosures down at the bottom. Today, as I said, is the 28th day of August, 2019. We lost one tick. In crude, we made six ticks in gold. Uh, we ended up just plus 50 on the morning session. We did get our goal for the day. Um, today it took 21 minutes and two trades to get to the goal. At that point, we're up on trial as a contract and we took a total of 11 trades. We had three stopouts toward the end of the session. That's why we ended up with just 50 bucks. But Anyway, on the month now, we're at $6,698. That's over 20 days, averaging $334 per day. On the year, we're at $24,250. That's over 154 days, averaging $157 per day. $157 per day. Okay, now let's go see what we did or didn't do. Um, let's go all the way back here. There we go. All right. So our first trade here on gold, um, we had a break even. The next trade, we picked up 10 ticks. That's where we got our goal for the day. Um, the next trade, we picked up another 10 ticks. So we we're at plus 20 at that point. Then we picked up two right here, put us at plus 22. And then we had a break even. We missed this long trade right here. Um, but we had a break even right there. Then we stopped out pretty much to the tick on that one. And that put us back down to 14. And we stopped out pretty much to the tick again on that one. And that put us down to six. Okay. And this one was, it was after the morning session ended. I picked up three ticks on that, but I'm not counting that toward the room. Um, and that was it. And that was it for the morning session. Uh, not for the morning session, for gold in the morning session. Okay. Now, the euro, we didn't do anything with the euro. 
See the market opened right here, and it was just chop all morning. Um, during the break right here, it was a, uh, it wasn't really trending, so I wouldn't have done anything with it. But there was a bounce off the BBC, but the euro gave up nothing today. Okay, crude. We had the crude inventories come out today. Um, the number that I gave was 55, 5542 for the next week. Okay, that's where crude should get to. Um, we started out, started out with a stop out here on crude. And then when the inventories came out, we jumped in here, picked up one tick, put us at minus seven. Picked up one more tick to put us at minus six. Then we picked up five ticks to put us at minus one. And then uh, we get into the break here. And during the break, uh, looks like there was a shorting opportunity right there. And that's it. Just one shorting opportunity during the break. That worked out well. Okay, and on the ES, we had just one trade this morning. Right here, and it was a break even. Okay, I don't think we missed anything on the ES. No. Nope, and there was nothing during a break. I'm just looking down here at the slingshot. And there was really nothing during the break either. Wow, that was a quick recap. <laughs> um, let me scroll down and see if no, John's not here yet. And Dwayne's probably not back yet, but um, today is the 28th day of August, 2019. Again, if you're gonna read if you're going to read the spreadsheet, you could read all the CFTC risk disclosures down at the bottom. Today, we lost one tick in crude. We made six ticks in gold. That put us at plus 50 on the morning session. Today, it took 21 minutes and two trades to get to the goal for the day. At that point, we're up $100 per contract. And we took a total of 11 trades. So on the month now, we're up $6,698. That's over 20 days, averaging $334 per day. On the year, we're at $24,250. That's over 154 days, averaging $157 per day. $157 per day. Now, all right. Um, if you've not taken a free trial with us and you want to take a free trial, you get one every six months, okay? Maximum of two. Um, go to the homepage at CFRN.net. In the right-hand column, it says five-day free trial, apply.cfrn.net. Click on that, and it'll bring you to this page, eminitrainingschool.com. You can go directly to eminitrainingschool.com if you want to. Um, but anyway, all we ask for here is your name, your email, your phone number. And you can tell us your biggest training challenge so we can tailor one-on-one -on -one training specifically for you. Hit the send button, and it'll send you a confirmation link. You must click on the confirmation link. Okay, we don't know you took the trial until you click that link. All right. All right. And that is it. So with that, I can pass it back out to Studio A, fabulous Phoenix, Arizona, overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Dwayne, if you are ready. I'm ready. Okay. Recap of the recap. Uh, today, it took 21 minutes and two trades to get to $100 per contract. 21 minutes, two trades. That's a good bingo. It is. Did you explain to folks why we only trade one contract? Did you explain we're working against a two-hour shot clock? Did you possibly explain that even once we reach our goal, because we teach, once you reach a goal for the day, cash the check, put the mouse away, but we're committed to trade for the entire two hours, no matter how early on we might get our goal, because it's a training environment. We're, we're not there just so people can copy the trades. We're there doing what we do for two hours, what you're doing what you do for two hours, so that people can learn how to do what you do. 
It's not about just copying Michael. It's about learning what he's doing, what he's seeing, what he's thinking, and the appropriate action to take. Because it's a rules-based environment, only so many things can happen. There are only so many questions that can be asked. The answers to those questions never change. Never. Always the same. Always, Always the same. same. We're the ultimate in financial boredom. <laughs> And that's where you want to be. Put that on you want it to be born. You do. You absolutely do. Okay. Uh, now, John was going to pop in early. Did 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 uh, Valerie... Is Valerie here today? Uh, she's here. I don't know if she's listening. Okay. I'm here. here. Oh, uh, Valerie, did you happen to get a hold of uh, Garrett yesterday? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. I was just... I had sent a message to see if you could reach him and uh, see if he was coming on today. Uh so I'll reach, I'll reach out. You can still reach out if you want. Just let him know uh, to try to come about mm, one one fifteen, if that one Eastern. He's on Pacific time. Correct. All right. So, thank you. So anytime one, anytime one Eastern or later. Okay, because John's got some stuff he wants to cover, and I want to give him time to get it out. Okay. okay. Perfect. Thank He's you. not in here yet. Okay. He probably will be shortly because he called me before the show and told me he wanted to get on here. <clears throat> Okay. okay. Was there any news out this morning? Um, uh, just uh, crude inventories, I think. That was the only thing. thing. Now, guys, I have not sent the daily doubles out yet. I had a bit of a hectic morning. Uh, but at some point during the broadcast today, or worst case, right after the broadcast, I will put out the daily doubles. Okay. Crude was a huge miss. Was it? Uh, yeah. yeah, they're expecting to draw 2.8 million, and they're going to draw 10. Wow. And for some reason, it's showing is green. I don't know why they would show it's green. It should be red. But Yeah, it's confusing the way they do that. It's, it's like when they tell you to, to vote yes for Prop 105. Mm. It, it, you know, you got to be a, a Rhodes Scholar to figure out how that's going to be interpreted by the voting machine, you know. We have a big thing here in Phoenix. They want to put in uh, light rail out. Now, the, what it's going to cost them to lay the additional light rail, and I'm pro light rail. You know, it's earth friendly and all that, and it's kind of cool. Looks like a it's going to have a space travel vehicle. We have it over a good part of the downtown Phoenix area, but they want to bring it out to South Mountain, which is uh, an historic part of Phoenix, and a lot of the residents and business owners don't want it. So there's two bills, uh, Prop 105 and 106. Now, we're pro light rail. We'd like to see it come. And we've sat down and we've studied those things over and over, back and forth. And it, I think we've got it figured out. But at first blush, if you vote yes on Prop 105, it feels like you're voting for the, right, for the light rail. But what you're, what you're voting yes to is the thing that kills the light rail. It's all very confusing. I think it's... Huh. Do you know how we're simple by design? I think that yeah. stuff's complicated by design. They don't want anybody yeah, to figure is. it out. Yeah. <clears throat> it probably is. It's, you gotta have a lawyer read it. Yeah. Vote early, vote often. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, there was a question in the chat box about uh, one of the swing trades. I see Tim is typing in. So, Dave, let me look at this. Uh, I've been in and out of the office this morning, so let me just look and see exactly what we're talking about. Okay. <clears throat> Number 13, that's the one you mentioned. Uh, consider short on the ES, 2855, 2835, 2025. Now, for anyone that may be new, here, let me just, oh, I guess I wasn't supposed to share that on the air if it hasn't done it yet, but that's okay. You're all family, so there's a radio freebie. Let me go to the ES chart. Okay. Knock this down. Boom. boom. Okay. So, 28.55. This has triggered, okay? And 28.55 going to be right there. Okay. 
Let me just mark it accordingly. Number 13. Okay. Is that the only one that triggered this morning? Uh, was your name Dave? I think it was Dave. Just type it into the chat box. I'll look at the other ones as well. Um, all right. So we triggered. <clears throat> we got back above the trigger. Have you read the information uh, that tells uh, why the logical swing trader alerts are very different than what you might uh, come across in other swing trade alert services. So we had a swing low here of just 2851.75, call it 52. So this little three point teaser and then a bounce, okay? Now I haven't uh, done my necessary work to determine which uh, or at what place I wanna put that stop. But for right now, <clears throat> I'm just gonna stick it at 2905. I'm going to do, and I'm going to put it in there. Um, I'm going to say tentative stop loss because I really want to. I've got to do some some math and some some figuring, uh, <clears throat> some ciphering. No, Dave, if you're watching via YouTube, use the Telegram chat box. Okay, I don't have the chat box open on YouTube because I'm just not able to monitor them both at the same time. So let's go tentative. Stomp loss, 29.05. Yeah, we got a zone at 04.05. Or was that last week? Uh, yeah, that was last week. Now for now, I'm just going to go 29.06. All right. Tentative stop loss. Okay. Thank you very much, Dave, for bringing that to my attention. I can see now that you are typing into the chat box there. So anyone who is listening or watching the show via YouTube, you have to use the Telegram chat box. We don't have to, but it's there for you. <clears throat> Someday I'm going to get my other monitor <clears throat> back online and I'll be able to monitor the YouTube chat box because not everybody watching on YouTube has Telegram. But let me just say, if you don't have Telegram, you should get it. It's free. Telegram.org, Pentagon grade security, lightning fast. Um, you can make phone calls. You can even do video calls. We use it primarily for chat, but we have about nine different channels. We have a channel for the weekly trading zones, for the workshop videos, for the discussion group. We got the official alert channel. We got the trial alert channel. We just we really uh, take advantage, full advantage, the best of our ability. To all that Telegram offers, and it's been a real, uh, been a real friend of this show, <clears throat> and been a real friend of the Logic Two Four Seven Alerts since it came to be. Okay, all right, we're going to start with the Concierge Trade Alerts. Let me pull those up from last night. If you want to grab a screenshot, you can do that. So get your screenshot grabber ready. Okay, now. Concierge trade alerts. <clears throat> this static report comes out once per session, typically shortly after the Globex open. Last night it came out 7.15 p.m. Eastern. If you're a passport holder uh, <clears throat> and you have email delivery, I send the emails out, but I also post it in the Telegram channel. And if you should have access to the channel based on your membership and you don't, just reach out to Valerie, uh, 949-42-E-MINI, or email her support at cfrn.net. She'll make sure you have proper access to all the different channels that you, you know, qualify to have access to. Now, the concierge alerts are different from the logic alerts. <clears throat> concierge trade alerts are based on prior price behavior. The logic 247 alerts, which as this comes out once per session, static report. Logic 247 is delivered dynamically around the clock 24-7 in the Logic 247 alert channel. Okay, Now, those numbers, those alerts, those are based on current price behavior. 
the weekly trading zones, which you'll be seeing on here today, <clears throat> that's when logic and concierge converge. Weekly trading zone. File that away. One last thing, important prices, important areas are almost always tested. So here's what I recommend everyone do when your alerts come in, <clears throat> concierge, because the, the dynamic alerts, the Logic 247, those will just be coming at you around the clock as opportunity develops live in real time. So the first one, consider being long at 28.84, what you would do when your alerts come in is you just put a line in the sand. That's what I call it, okay? When price hits 28.84, we want to be long and only think about taking long trades. The flip side of the concierge last night was to consider being short at 28.70. That's going to be right here. Okay. Now, these are weekly trading zones. They are not this week's. These are still hangovers from last week. So let me adjust these real quick. I hear John's in the audience. John, I'm going to be with you and just let me just finish this thought. And then I want to be able to give you my undivided attention. So 74.75, weekly trading zones go out to partners and passport holders every Monday morning, 6.15 a.m. Eastern, okay, since December 14th, 2009. Okay, the zone below, okay, hold on to your hats. From 74.75, we drop all the way down to 84. Let me get rid of this one. Don't need that one. 28, 15, 28, 14, get rid of these, okay, so I wanted to make sure you understand that there's a lot of distance <clears throat> between these two zones, okay, and price is always trying to get to a zone, so if you triggered last night at 2870. Let me just notate that. Twenty eight seventy. We consolidated so long last night. I started to think we weren't gonna break out of it, but we did, as we always do. Okay. Important prices, important areas, almost always tested. What does that mean? Here's what it means. <clears throat> On this first drop from twenty eight seventy, we hit twenty eight sixty five. It's a five point S&P move. Price then gets back above the trigger, finds resistance at the weekly zone, and then John B just right with you. And then we drop to 28.63. So we have a five point move, we have a seven point move. We get back above the trigger, and this time we drop all the way down to a swing low at 28.53. So we'll call it 54. So 28, 54 to 7, that's, six, that's a 16 point drop. Okay, three triggers, one alert. I'm going to go into more detail on this. I'm going to pick up right where I left off uh, after we talk to John. John, welcome to the show. Hello, thanks very much. Uh, you bet. Sorry right. to keep you waiting. No, that's okay. My pleasure. Look, uh, the could you go to a daily on that? See, see how it looks. Uh, yeah, you betcha. I've got a daily right here. Yeah, you know, it's a it's a tough uh, tough assignment for this market to go up, given everything that's happened. You know, you yes, can see we've I, had I three agree. we've had three uh, three attempts at uh, at going up. You know, from from a sort of a a, a a very bad sell off, if you like, each time. And you know, there are some really good stats that came out. Uh, this uh, consumer confidence is 135. It's a virtual all time high now, uh, which is really something. Is, is it an all time high? Uh, not quite. I, not it's, quite. It's close. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's the best since 2000. Unfortunately, we all know we all know what happened in 2000. So it's got a certain amount of risk to its height, if you like. Uh, but um, that that underline you just put there is what I would consider a potential shorting point. If if you're not already short from a higher level, if we start breaking down, as unfortunately looks like will be the case, because 
you know, look, you can rule out some sort of unexpected uh, development. The fact that we're rallying today is is actually not not you know it's quite <laughs> impressive, given that we had another stab here of the lows between yesterday. Well, the Asian and, session was so quiet last night, John. Were you watching that? No, I wasn't. No, okay. it was but, just uh, it just locked in this tight about three point range for I think five hours or better. Yeah, look. Let me just, I want to, as I said to you earlier, I want to sort of say a few things today. This is a very important show, uh, I hope, for everybody because of what I'm about to say about certain things that are likely to happen. <clears throat> you know, we're coming into, uh, we're coming into uh, the end of August. Not a particularly good, uh, in fact, if you could stay on that, uh, if you could stay on that. Um, Daily chart? Daily? Yeah, well, let's have a look at the weekly now. Okay. You know what? I'm going to fire up the other platform and take a look at weekly because it shows up just a little bit better. Okay. Yes, s &P. All right, we want September. Once I have this set up, we'll have to be aggravated with it again. Oh, all right. Uh, and it's on weekly. That must be where we left it yesterday. That really is. It's very different from the daily. But, uh, uh, yeah, yeah it know, does. Not, well, it, it kind of fits with what I'm about to tell you, which is, you know, if we do get an upside surprise here, uh, it would be uh, pretty constructive, um, especially if we start taking out the 2950 area and, 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 and getting on and, and look the core of what I'm about to emphasize is what I've been sort of alluding to over the past month or so which is the bottom in 20 you know in 2018 and December 26 mm -hmm. is a really really big deal you know because we had a three-wave pullback there's no getting away from it that's a perfect three-wave pullback from the October high and if you if you had more data you know what happened is that we had the 2018 top right we had the January 2018 top and then we sort of went sideways and then we went to a new high in it's October. A continuous contract John so there's there, there that you, more data okay. that you wanted yeah. yeah if you could squeeze it up a bit here sure. Okay, so look, I mean, we were in some kind of a third wave from the 2016 lows all the way up to this 2882, okay? Right. And then we started this correction. We had a perfect three waiver, which was over pretty quickly, right? It was literally over in a month, within a month or so, or a quarter, quarter to quarter. And then we started a B wave, and then we had a devastating C wave. What does that remind you of? It's a kind of a smaller version. It's a, it's a year long version of what happened over the decade of the, the 2000s, right? Right. And I remember before Trump was ever president, you know, he used to, he used to bemoan that, you know, it was a lost decade because the S&P basically didn't go anywhere for the whole for the whole decade, and, and especially after 2009, where sure made which, up for Which wasn't it. very good for investors, but for traders, uh, wow. It was fantastic, fantastic right. Fantastic, and, yeah. and, and not only that, uh, for real estate, it was the decade, you know, oh the greatest goodness. decade ever, Indeed. because that was when The volatility Dubai, in that decade for real estate is just beyond <coughs> charts. Right, but remember, we started off with a huge bull market until the crash but so and and trump built a lot of buildings in that time and he did very very well uh you know i really kind of you know it's it's the best decade of his life for sure or maybe i mean listen he's probably doing pretty well now he's making 480 454 million or 434 million last year and, and he and you have people like tom steyer calling him a fraud and a failure i mean you know it's ridiculous and by the way you look i think one of the greatest things going for trump no, remember, they hit this guy with $2 billion worth of negative advertising in 2016, right? The, the, the bloodlust is just, 
Right. Repulsive, and I mean, you know, the CNN, academic. it's just disgraceful. They pluck these headlines out of, you know, oh, he's isolated on the world stage. I mean, listen, everybody's around this guy like bees around any pot. You know, he's the center of attention wherever he goes. Uh, and I, I think the G7 was actually very successful. You know, it was handled pretty deftly. And as I, I actually put out a tweet this morning about the farmers and uh, the climate and everything, and I, and I basically said, look, if you want the world to be, uh, you know, negative 10, 10% GDP or 20 uh, and you want famine and, and all the rest of it, you know, uh, get the new, get, get the green deal in, you know, to get, get this green deal done. Okay, because that's what's going to happen. The, the, the way we're going, you know, because of the favorable weather, the incredibly favorable weather we've had in the last few years, you know, so-called climate hoax, uh, we've got the most abundant crops of all time. Oh, speaking uh, of, speaking of I don't want to. I don't care your train of thought, but I get, we got to go back to the climate change. I want to show you something here in just a second. But keep going, please. Well, uh, before you say it, maybe they're going to show that. Uh, they, apparently, they just did a satellite thing around the world, and the world has never been greener than it is right now. So, <laughs> even though we might be losing some 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 very important, uh, you know, jungle and stuff in the in sure. the Amazon, sure. you know, I, the world is making up for it. Uh, elsewhere uh, as you said yesterday the world has a way of taking care of itself absolutely, absolutely. cleaning its air you know <clears throat> anybody who believes they can alter climate change is freaking bonkers i mean there's just, it's just why does lightning awesome. strike in an old growth forest well yeah. because that's how yeah. god intended it and there needs to be a fire there that stuff needs to be burned to the ground so they can be fresh growth yeah. and new life and john i don't know whether she actually I don't this could be let me just say it this could be fake news folks this could be fake news but it was attributed to her yesterday and I haven't had time to vet it I put it in the breeze channel for you guys to vet if we change our times with the sole intent of increasing the amount of daylight we receive that's an extra hour of sunshine that will warm the planet that's one extra hour per day of extra heat warming our already unstable planet we need to repeal daylight savings time as a primary measure to decrease the rate of climate change. Fewer hours of sunshine equal less heat hitting Earth's surface. We're running out of time. Do you Can't know if she said she this? Put that out. <laughs> I don't know that she really said it, John. Somebody might just be painting the tape here. But I, I did I did chuckle. Uh, and I asked the guys in the Breeze channel to you know, try to vet it. Uh, probably the Snopes yeah. folks will tell you. She, oh, she didn't say that. Yeah, yeah. So going back to where we are today, look, look at that bottom in uh, in December mm -hmm. of last year. I mean, after the one worst of the best, October, one of the, one of the, after the yeah. worst December since uh, right, right, yeah, 19, worst December 30, since 1930 or something. So but there's no getting away that that was a B wave, a B wave, uh, 20, 28, the, the eight, 2018 top, October 2018 was a B wave high, and we had a C wave down. And we, in my view, we are in a, we are in a, uh, uh, we are in a, a, a new bull market here, a uh, new bull leg, if you like, uh, very similar to uh, 2009 going in, 2009 going into, uh, <clears throat> going into, um, into uh, 20, 2011, 12, 13, 14, 15, you know, the question is, are we about to see 2012, 13, 14, 15 over the next few months unfold <clears throat> in this market? And the answer for me is probably, and I'll tell you why, uh, the, the correction that, or the economic uh, weakness that we're currently experiencing, right, <clears throat> is nine months after, I mean, nine months to a year after the top of last year okay so from from you know if this is if this is as bad as it gets i mean if you count the months right now nine months so the economy tends to res respond nine months after the market so september october november december should be pretty good market months and economic months from down from now on because 
uh, first of all, the Fed's got our back. They're lowering rates. They're going to lower rates again in the next, next uh, meeting for sure, or actually a quarter for, for sure, and maybe a half. And they're probably going to do another one before the end of the year. So that's potentially, uh, you know, one and a half point drop, uh, you know, or a point, a point or more down in interest rates, possibly a bit more. Uh, if, if you could just go back to that for a second. Sure, uh, I will. I just wanted to bring this up. It's supposedly, uh, it's fake. According to the good folks, okay. it's Snopes. So. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right, there you go. Uh, so, so, you know, there is a real chance here that better economic numbers coming out over the next four months could drive prices higher and, uh, and, and really, and possibly sort of go into a parabolic blow off going into 2020, going into 2020. Possibly might have another, remember, markets tend to do things two years out. We ran into trouble in January of 2018, right? First mm -hmm. time. Right. So possibly January of 2020 could be a problem. But what's not to like about a January 2020 high or February 2020 high? You know, most election years, the market goes up, but there might be a few surprises, uh, especially if we get a third party candidate or something. So uh, the the uh, but here's the point if we, let's say the high comes in February at nine months to February you, you come right into October November so if the market the econ that potentially sets the economy up to peak right around election time which is as good as it gets right 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 so you know this could really change and, and all this talk of recession that these fellows are trying to sort of heap on us could become ancient history soon when the market starts hitting new all-time highs because uh, obviously that's going to crush crush the left uh, even more and and validate trump uh, you know and everything he's doing and you know i i would say this headline this morning where google has, is quitting uh, china and moving their production to vietnam is just a mind-boggling uh, development because you know, is Google the one that's doing the work for the Chinese military and, and is cozying up to China? Would they be yeah, leaving that's, China? That's, that's what we've been hearing. Right. So why Google quit China? Oh, and why it's heading? No, that's an article from 2016. So yeah. let's go to news. <coughs> it's, it's Google on, plays uh, politics with China as it quietly bans state-sponsored. Is that? Do no, no, the, it's actually in Zero Hedge, the, the, the headline. Okay, let's go, to, let's go to Zero Hedge and check it out. It's down about a page from the, from the, from the top. Guys, if you're not familiar with this website, ZeroHedge.com, it is one that we uh, enjoy very much. And if you've never it's taken a, good, a look, uh, uh, take a look. It's, it's, a, pretty good, it's a pretty good source for, for breaking news and, mm -hmm. and important news, you know, financial news and stuff. Uh, Are we seeing it yet? Uh, but there you go. There you go. Look at that. Right here. Okay. Yeah. Google has reportedly become the latest company to aggressively move production out of China and into Vietnam, and as it hopes to create a low-cost supply chain in Southeast Asia, it will serve as a springboard for its growing hardware ambitions. Hmm. I mean, right I there, think that's something to pay attention to out over yeah. that this morning, you know, and uh, this is going to drive them to do a deal. You know, the cooler. The, the, the oh, Biden's you're saying this is going to this is this is going to drive Trump to or who's it driving Trump or well, China? It's going to drive China to do a deal for sure. OK, for sure. And they and this is so look, you know, but there's no guarantee remember, remember that a deal December. would stop this move. Or do you no, think this no, whole no, thing no, or do you think this whole thing is staged to get a deal? No, I don't. No, I don't think so. Okay. But 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 the thing is that look you know, China have said they're they're willing to talk. You never know, they could be a meeting of the minds and you know, one of the guys we talked about it yesterday, they should sign the May Agreement. You know, maybe they will sign something close to the May Agreement, you know, soon and get the ball rolling and maybe they'll come up maybe if trump's really smart about this he may be able to get them to commit to 250 to 50 billion worth of buying or something to reverse this deficit if, if he does that he's going to look like a knight in shining army armor you know he's going to look really really smart and he got the japanese deal done already 
uh, that's a, I mean, that alone is enough impetus for China to get with a program and getting one with the UK. You know, he's I mean, he could he could have the UK, China, Japan, South Korea, and possibly even the EU all wrapped up by the end of this year. Right. Right. Think about that. <clears throat> Uh, and be heading towards his ultimate goal, which is a, a world free of tariffs. So you know this is a monumental. And if they give them, if they can get towards that, why do you think the market wouldn't be at all time highs by December or January? Think about that. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. So so it you, you know this is a pretty interesting uh, turn of events uh, that just are going to knock the deadbeat Dems on CNN off their off their. Uh, off their chairs <laughs> so uh, it's so boring these guys it's just unbelievable the stuff they come up with hey, did you see this headline um, exclusive fake branded bars slip dirty gold into world markets well I wouldn't rule anything out these days uh, you know there's all kinds of mischief by the way uh, the, the Mexican uh, military just seized 52,000 pounds of fentanyl uh, where? Somewhere I just saw that headline. Uh, I, I don't know whether they got it off a ship or something, but it was a very, it was a pretty big deal. That, that's probably enough to kill every man, woman, and child in America. No, uh, uh, ten times over. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. Now look, look at the way the market is heading higher here. You know, the, this market has a kind of a. I think it's fitting the picture of what I'm outlining for everybody here, and I, you know, the. Every single time you miss a bottom on this thing, you can say, "Wish I'd bought it," and that's what I tried to get across to people yesterday. You know, when you when you get a mid-air bottom and it reverses, it is it does tend to be a big deal. And right now, this market's sort of defying gravity. No, it's 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 definitely not out of the woods. Don't even think of that for a second, because if this thing does turn down, it, it, it could be it could be brutal. And there may be one more leg going down into the end of the month, you know, and then maybe lift off in September. Very often, Labor Day, right after Labor Day, you know, if the market starts trending higher, it tends to set the tone for the rest of the year. So that's another important thing to, to look for. But you remember this market, you know, we're, we're, we're only, you know, 20 days away from the next Fed meeting. And I believe the gold and silver and the market itself are going to be probably rallying into that meeting uh, ahead of uh, anticipating at least a, a quarter point rate of rate hike and potentially a half. Yeah, there's now all I that talk about a half again. Right. And I want to shift to the uh, look. Uh, the, the quickest way this guy can get Trump off his back is to drop the rates by a half. You know, uh, it's just you know, it'll be it'll be Trump will probably send him a you know. Uh, some very favorable tweets if that happens and then this crisis is over and uh, it's going to look very good for Trump so especially if he does another quarter point or a couple more before the end of the year that's what he should do he should do you know a half in September and another two to you know another couple another two quarters before the end of the year and then call it quits because you know he can't do it in 2020 because it's an election year so he's got his hands are going to be tied I, I think uh, so, so um, you know, the more he does, the sooner he does, the more he does, the better, the better for everybody. Um, and it, you know, generally speaking, the rule of thumb is, you know, when they start lowering rates, the economy responds about a year later. So that all fits the picture. Uh, and, but you know, you, what you don't want to do is what George Bush, George Bush the first, did back in 1992 when he had the savings and loan crisis and you know he and you remember i mean what a what a terrible outcome this guy had when he was at 85 or 86 percent popularity most popular president just about in history after the gulf war right sure. who would have thought he was going to lose in 92 right you know so there's no guarantees in this world uh, no matter how popular you are or think you are or how you, how you may not be uh, there's nothing certain about the 2020 election, and uh, that may be one of the reasons why gold and silver are moving up as strongly as they are. Uh, the market has a tremendous sense of the future. That and, and look, if you don't get the memo right now, there is an earthquake going on under the gold and silver markets in a way we've never, never seen before. 
this is something almost unheard of what's going on it's just you know this isn't kind of a like a runaway bull market there's just a power behind this market that's just amazing to to experience and i think it's a very very early stage phenomenon i i really am starting to believe that we're going to experience something look just like this 1979 didn't even get going until september and went up for you know hundred several hundred percent in the last four months of the year there's a distinct possibility that could happen this year this thing could turn into one of the greatest you know that bitcoin you know uh, analogy i laid out yesterday mm -hmm. and speaking of laying out i think we've laid out some incredible scenarios for our listeners over the past few months and especially weeks you know a week or two ago when the silver was you know in the 16s we we pointed out that it should be 30 30 dollars plus based on the 13 1300 2013 highs in gold and look what happened i mean we came in yesterday silver was up 30 30 cents gold was down just marginally and finished the day up about 15 and I said yesterday or the day before, I said, look, you know, when a bull market really starts raging, you get the hedge funds out there. Somebody, somebody really smart is going to say, what hasn't moved yet? And it's going to happen to stocks. And you know what stock I think it's going to happen to real soon. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 you know, but it happened to platinum this morning. Platinum was basically unchanged this morning. It is now up $40. And I have been harping on about this for a while now and this is a we are in a third wave to the upside in platinum today it started today and you can see the end of the one too if you want to put the platinum up uh, Dwayne platinum sure uh, the, the the platinum is a really really big deal and, and look I'm gonna I'm gonna make the same prediction that I made on this show when palladium hit 800 and it, for those who are, Look at that. Who are listening that trend line that we drew right, remember right. we put this on here and right, right, that right. there's the exact move that right. that looked like the next high probability thing right and look one two one two these these pullbacks we the pre look at the previous we we talked about the higher highs and the one twos and i i think i made a reference to it being very similar to 1982 to the bottom in the stock market because mm -hmm. in 1982 you know for a decade or two for those who are old enough to to remember they used to always show the first day of you know it was about august the 12th 1982 ding 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 that was the day the dow rose 50 points well it rose 50 points from 777 so it was a pretty big deal that day right we're up yeah we're up now it rises 50 points while i'm in the bathroom right we're we're up 40 40 dollars today off 850 so it's kind of an interesting analogy to to what happened you know what this thing is going higher look with a bit of luck you might get a pullback from 905 down to 900 maybe down to 890 somewhere like that you got to start buying the platinum i mean this is one you got to really start paying attention to because i said it on this show when the day the palladium hit 800 what did i say it's going to 1600 did it happen? Yes, it did. I'm putting it. I'm going out on a limb today, and we're going to 1600 on platinum. We're going to 1200 first, and then we're going to 1600, and eventually 2400, and we might go to 3000 before it's all over. So here you have the opportunity to get in a trade. You just kind of, if you can try and buy it and put it in the bottom drawer, you know, always put a stop under it no matter what, just in case. But uh, this one looks like it could be, it's almost going to be like Peter Steidelmeyer buying gold at $104.6 in 1976 and holding it all the way to 875. It's just going to be one of those trades. Um, because palladium, even though palladium is down today, it's actually picking back up. And Palladium to me looks like it's headed for 2,400, uh, tw you know, 2,000, 2,400. And if that happens, you, you, you know, you'll see platinum on afterburners. So. <clears throat> I agree. I agree, John. Now, what kind of time frame are you looking at on this? Do you have one? You know, uh, maybe you can squeeze it up so we can get a bit of a sense of uh, yeah. how it looks. We can even go now, monthly you know, if you want. Right. You know, what's going to happen with platinum is what already happened with gold. And if you look at the most recent platinum chart, 
you know, somewhere it's not a six year deal. It's only a year, year long history or maybe two years. It's going to hit a new contract high somewhere, but you know, around it, maybe, maybe it's a thousand and it maybe it has to go over a thousand to hit a new contract high. Why, why am I putting platinum for 1200? Well, because the measured move from 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 uh, the low from 800 to contract high it takes it up to about 1050 and then the measured move should double the double the range up to 1200 and guess what happened when we last hit 1200 we got repelled so you know we could get to 1200 we could get repelled maybe we could consolidate for a bit and by the way right now 1200 platinum probably translates to about 1900 gold um, so it all kind of fits the picture after this thing breaks out to 12 from 1200 you're going to see a rapid move up to 1600 just rather like palladium and ultimately you know it's going to spend some time consolidating at 16 or pulling back a little bit 15 14 and then at some point in the future uh, it's going to be heading for 2000 you know 1900 2000 its previous highs of 2011. john there was a good uh, question uh, in the chat box for you with futures contracts, of course, we know that they expire, roll over. Yeah. Now, the question was, how do I hold platinum if the contract that I buy is always expiring? My answer was you can roll it forward. Do you have another yeah, answer? Yeah, absolutely. No, it just, that's a perfect way to do it. Okay. Or you could potentially take a look at some platinum stocks and maybe buy some calls on them mm -hmm. or leaps or things okay. like that if you want the leverage. Uh, but um, look, this this is. I mean, now this, we always talk about know, physical gold uh, and the importance of, uh, of having you know gold that you can hold. Uh, uh, does that hold true with you uh, as far as platinum goes? You know, look, physical gold is for people who like physical gold. You know, mm -hmm. there's no leverage in it. I mean, if you're going to buy, if you really believe, no, no, in no, gold, you know, and and that, that's exactly you're exactly right. There's no leverage in it. Uh, yeah. There are a, a whole list of reasons why people would want to accumulate physical gold. Yeah, when because when the markets start to fall apart, all of this you know paper stuff, you know all of all of this money that lives in the clouds, well, where's that if there's no electricity, you know? Yeah. By the way, the gold just jumped, and the gold stocks have yeah, turned back take, up again. Let's take a peek. And uh, Royal Gold is uh, back to an all-time high, pretty much. Our GLD, uh, there we go. Be, be, yeah, look at that. Can, can you go back to the uh, to the flat for a second sure. by the way we put out a buy actually bought that royal go. gold at about $24.60 uh, a couple job. of years ago yeah so look you know it wasn't so long ago we were looking at silver the silver chart very similar to that mm -hmm. to this platinum and saying look look at where it could go why don't you pull up the silver chart and take a look at it Go silver. See, see the similarity. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes, sure do. Now, how, pull up. Uh, this is going to knock your socks off. Pull up uh, USLV, and and we already put a hundred and thirty dollar price target on this. So check it out. Look at the base on that thing. Look at the way this thing a little double up. bottom down here. Yeah, you could have yeah, a triple yeah, bottom. Yeah. This is a weekly yeah, chart. Yeah, we had, we had a kind of a double bottom, bottom on here. the silver too. And we're going to hit a new contract high on silver before. And the fact that long. we dipped a little bit lower on this low than these previous two lows, I like that. Oh, listen, Dwayne, the market's suddenly tanking here. Something bad happened. So uh, let me go to the S and P real quick. Yeah. Hmm. Good All bad. right, guys. There we yeah. go. Yeah. All right. So the, the gold shot up. Uh, the gold has jumped three or four dollars just in a minute. Uh, the platinum just gone to 43 now. I don't see anything on my news feed. Uh, let me check yeah. another spot. Another the, uh, the nuggets jumping. The, by the way, I, I think the nugget got repelled a couple of times at 100 yesterday. You know, I think it breaks through 100. It's going to run just like Royal Gold. Um, and if you could put Royal Gold back up, actually, just to take a look at it. You know, look at look at look at this sideways action here in the gold. It just looks looks. I mean, it's almost unstoppable. You know, it's uh, restraining itself from moving higher. You know, it's it, it's really. Uh, I'm sorry, it, it, what did you say? What did you say to put up? What you want to see? 
Um, uh, just to finish, uh, you know, gold is back to the USLV, to or do you want to go? Yeah, uh, go to um, the Jane. No, yeah, Jane. Why, why don't you put up a Jane? Okay. Well, yeah, look at that. I mean, that's a chart. super, super, that super, super bullish, super, super bullish chart oh, here. Very I mean, much geez. so. Very much so. Yeah, this thing is going to absolutely fly here any minute. Just, you know, just we got some resistance at 120, a little more yeah. at 140. If we get past uh, 160, then there's just nothing in the way all the way up to 260. All right, let's take a look at all right S and P. Now, to recap what's happened, we had a concierge trade alert short. That's the static report. Comes out once per session, but good for the entire session. When the CTA hits your desk, put two lines in the sand. This is what I teach all of our traders. The long side, the short side. Everything in between is the market still making up its mind. Okay? Once we hit these areas, now the market is showing us that... Perhaps the mind is made up. But here, you've got to look to here. We know that there's selling pressure here. Go ahead, John. Yeah. Uh, actually, could you put Royal Gold up? Just yeah. to have a look sure. at that one. Oh, 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 before you do that, can you go to a daily, to a daily on the... Uh, on the? On what? Is that the daily or a weekly? Is that a weekly or a daily? Uh, it's weekly. Yeah. If you could go to the daily on the Jane, I'd just to have a look at it there. Sure. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So, I mean, remember, we talked about these deep pullbacks that turned out, you know, this is, I mean, th to me, this is a quadruple one. These are two. just beautiful textbook pullbacks right here. No, oh, man, it's it's unbelievable. It's, it's it's quadruple one, two. And when you get expanding megaphone type, uh, it, it tells you the the upside from here. We're not even in a third wave on this thing yet. And when it happens, I mean, listen, this thing's going to 250. Uh, you know, it's just going to, it's going to 250. There's nothing can stop it. It's, it's, and, and this is why I think there's going to be an absolute eruption in the price of gold here in the next few months. However it's done, whether it's the, you know, the Fed. I mean, look, remember 2009, we're starting to do this, you know, the, 2008. We're starting to do the same things, you know, in 2008 that created the, the bottom in 2009 and a monumental 10-year bull market, right? Well, mm -hmm. what happened to the price of gold from that period? We basically went from 750 up to 1900 within three years. Right. So, you know, it's sort of deja vu all over again. We, you know, if, if we're starting from 1200 this time, you know, it, it looks like 2400, it's kind of baked in the cake, at least a double maybe even a two and a half times so two you know three thousand is 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 probably the number i shared an article this morning uh <clears throat> let me and, and, and if you could put uh, a royal gold up there as well Dwayne. yeah yeah sure i mean this is, and it's coming off a base of just monumental proportions you know this this uh we talked yesterday about moore's law and then we talked about a parallel in in the Bitcoin market, uh, yeah. in regards to mass adoption, RGLD, the amount of yeah, time, look, John, look, that it look took... Look at this chart. It's just incredible, that chart. The, the amount of time that it took for Bitcoin to go from... <clears throat> hang on. I think that's going to go to 300 eventually. That's Where do I have that chart? I might have closed... I think I closed. No, here it is. Uh, all right. Now, I know these numbers will mean something to you. Up until January 2nd of 2017, Bitcoin had traded below $1,000 for 1,124 days. Once it got above 1,000, the amount of time that it took to go from 1,000 to 2,000 was 20, yeah, it was 23 days. <coughs> So 1,124 days below a grand, and then the distance between a grand and two grand was, in fact, just 23 days. BTC, USD. Okay. 
Now, uh, the number of, okay, by the time Bitcoin price reached $5,000, the number of days it took to go to 6,000 was only 10 days. Now, they're starting to say that perhaps this $10,000 price on Bitcoin is the new $1,000. Yeah, and I've said the move, got, once got we got hold 10 on uh, yeah, the distance. Yeah, look, look, at the, look at the one twos, Dwayne. I mean, the, the, that, remember when this thing started pulling up from the, from the, the low, mm -hmm. uh, it didn't pull back very much. You know, oh, these are very shallow up. pullbacks on the way. Right, right, right. Okay. This was fairly healthy. This healthy. Key area here and here. Those are going to be resistance until proven otherwise. Okay. All right. Back to the S&P. Concierge trade alert. Static report. Numbers good for the entire session. Draw two lines on your chart. Here. Here. Okay. Everything in between these two lines is the market making up its mind. Okay. Now, up here... We only had a pop to 87.75, not a big deal. Still three and three quarter points is what the market made available. Here, we've had three triggers off the one alert. 28.70, back above the trigger. Now, what's important to note here is we triggered. And then, as we did what we expect to happen, right? Get back above the trigger again. Where do we find resistance? Right at a weekly trading zone. When a weekly trading zone is approached from below, we expect it to be good resistance until it isn't. When we approach it from above, we expect it to be good support until it isn't. Okay? Like here, support, support. Little support that fell through, and then on the pullback, becomes resistance. Consolidation, this is all that consolidation last night on the Asian session that I was talking about. So one trigger, two trigger, the third trigger, 14 points. Alexa, what's 14 times 50? 14 times 50 is 700. Thank you very much. All right, so this was a, a $700, this third trigger was a $700 per contract move. Anything else you want to cover, John? Uh, no, listen, I think it was a very good uh, opportunity just to kind of air some ideas. And, uh, you know, it certainly, I, I, I got to tell you, though, the way this thing is moving up, there's something really tectonic going on that uh, almost the likes of which we've never seen before. You're talking about gold? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, whether it's the Fed, you know, pumping the because look, anytime the Fed is really going to town on, on and trying, you know, for all we know, the Fed could be propping up this market, uh, you know, as much as they can. And, and that anytime gold and the market are going up together, it's just super bullish. It's, it's a very, very bullish situation. It tells you there's something big going on behind the scenes. And you know, the Fed probably knows uh, things that, that we don't know. Hang on. All right, last week, Logic 247, that was week 55. Now, CFRN, we've been broadcasting since 2005. Logic 247, we just had our one-year anniversary. The weekly trading zones, which we're going to talk more about here in a moment, we've been publishing those since December 14th of 2009. So everything that we talked to you about, uh, it's not the newest, latest thing to come down the pike. You know, it's not the new shiny object on the trading store shelf. Everything that we talk about here on this show, everything that we use is tried and tested by many all over the world for many years. No hype, just the truth about trading and the truth about markets. Not saying that to put us on some pedestal that we're better than anybody else. We just think we think everybody should be, you know, transparent and truthful. All right. So last week, week 55, we had a total of 79 alerts, 14 never triggered. That left us with 65 actionable alerts. 13 of the 65 were stopped out, 20%. Now that was last week. Our first year, <clears throat> we averaged. 20% of actionable alerts being stopped out. That's over the entire year. 
Sunday night, 6 p.m. Eastern. That's when we go to work. We keep our, we keep the pedal to the metal all the way up until Friday afternoon, 5 p.m. Eastern. We had a number of alerts because we had a gap lower open Sunday night. Okay, We were prepared in case the market <clears throat> decided to gap and run. It ran a little bit, but it ran right to an area where we expected it to be good support. And it was. In fact, let me, do I still have that up on my chart? Let's see. Sunday night. Okay, here's the Sunday night. Here's the Sunday night gap lower open this past Sunday night. Okay, we opened, we closed here on Friday. We opened here Sunday night. The first 30 minute candle, what did it do? It ran right down to a weekly trading zone. Found good support as we thought. Now these orders that you were just seeing are these alerts. These were positioned here. In case this zone didn't hold, Okay. We wanted to be able to take advantage of the move down to the next zone because price is always trying to get to a weekly trading zone. From the time the market opens at 6 p.m. Eastern Sunday all the way up to 5 p.m. Eastern on Friday, the market is trying to get to a weekly trading zone, either the one overhead or the one below. Okay, So if this did not hold as good support, obviously wanted to participate in that. <clears throat> as you can see, Price did not continue lower, and so none of these triggered. That's what the Zs are all about. S&P, Dow, Russell, NQ, Crude, Gold. Okay. Uh, this one actually did trigger British Pound. Here's an S&P. Now, gap fill. All right. We <clears throat> believe one of our market truths is that gaps on the indices in the futures market, almost always close. And I mean, almost always. In fact, there is no gap lower open in the indices, in the futures market, that has not closed. None. If this one had not closed this past Sunday night, that would be the only one that never closed. So our gap fill trade, <clears throat> when we didn't go lower, we revert to our gap fill, which found its target uh, here on the S&P, here on the Dow, here on the Russell, and here on the NQ. Here's uh, gold, here's crude. Now we have another string of no triggers, okay? which rolls us into the S&P again. Thumbs up means target found. Z's means never triggered. And a red X means stopped out. Okay, so here's S&P, Dow, crude, Dow, S&P, Russell, gold, crude. Now we're caught up, through, this is through yesterday, Tuesday. And Valerie, I don't know if you've run stats uh, on this week yet or not. If you're there, if you have them handy. Uh, I put them in our conversation channel. Oh, you did? Okay, beautiful. I will pull those up right now. So this is up through today, guys, August the 28th. Now remember, these are the logic. I was on the concierge. I jumped to the logic because I want to give you some contrast. These come out dynamically in real time, whether it's 2 a.m. or 2 p.m., if the markets are open and the markets are moving, as opportunity develops, it's brought to you live in real time right here in Telegram. So no matter where you're on the planet, if you've got an internet connected device, we'll find you. We'll deliver the goods. Okay. Now, you might have known, I shouldn't even say anything, but you may have noticed the absence of any red X's this week. Okay. That's an anomaly. Okay. It doesn't happen very often. It has happened before. We've never finished an entire week without a stop out. In fact, the last time we had such a situation where we went three days <clears throat> without a stop out. Of course, I brought it up on the radio shows I'm doing right now. And then I think the next three in a row probably got whacked. Eh, you know, that's just 
Life in the fast lane, right? So last week, again, there was 13. Uh, a total of 79 alerts. I'm often asked, on average, how many alerts do you put out every day, every week? It depends on market conditions. There have been weeks where the numbers, you know, down in the 40s. Uh, one week here recently, we, I think we had 100 for the week on the nose. Uh, you know, I think I've been saying the average was about 50, and I think that's pretty close to it. We can we can run the stats and see. Not that it not that it matters because if I tell you, well, I put out 40 alerts a week. Well, what if there's not 40 opportunities? What if there's 60? Right? I mean, so don't worry so much about that. Just know that as opportunity develops through the lens which we with which we see the market. You're going to know about it, all right? Okay, now, dynamic in real time as opportunity presents versus the static report, which I was just showing you, and I'm going to put up again now that you know a little more about it, what it actually is. Maybe this time you might want to grab that screenshot, okay? We've only gone over one market so far, the S&P. We'll jump through the Dow, the Russell crew. We'll jump through the rest of them here pretty quick. Again, if you are listening via YouTube and you have any questions at all, please, by all means, put them in the Telegram chat box. And if I don't spot it, Valerie will spot it, and we'll certainly get you an answer to your question, whatever that might be. Now, let me go to the message Valerie sent me. Okay. All right. I got it. Week 56, this week, so far to date, we've had 42 alerts. And see, today's only, we're halfway through Wednesday. 28 of the 42 were actionable. And we've had zero get stopped out. One is still open, okay? Uh, now, FT, that means it reached the final target. If there's only... <clears throat> Uh, it, uh, on a multiple target alert, <clears throat> a PT means we reached at least the first target, okay? And whether there's multiple targets or just one target on an alert, FT means we reached the final target, okay? And one's still open. All right, now let's go back. Now, the thing I haven't layered in yet for you is the weekly trading zones. But as we encounter those and go through them, uh, I'm going to switch out last week's zones on the chart during the show today. I usually do it Thursday. I'm going to go ahead and, and do some of it today. Weekly trading zones, it's the crossroads, it's the junction, the juncture, where concierge and logic meet. Remember, con concierge is based on prior price behavior. Logic is based on current Price behavior. Okay, we've already addressed the S and P, so let's go to the Dow. And if you took a screenshot, you know the Dow, you'll be looking at the numbers I'm about to put up here. Now this week, although we had wide ranging zones, which pointed a finger at some pretty intense volatility. We really haven't, we've kind of, we've had some volatility, but we've done a lot of going sideways here. Now on the Dow, I said I was going to update the zones. So you know what? Let me back up to the S&P. Just update those real quick. Okay. Let's get over here. All right. So this week, the zone overhead is at 29, 14. Oh, come on. 2914. Okay, 13 slash 14. Okay. Uh, below that's 2874 slash 75. Okay, I did update that one just now. And then below that is 2814 slash 15. Okay. There are others, but we only really need to focus for now. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and take these old ones. Well, that's, 
let's see, that's 13, 14. Okay, so that's a good one. So 26, 27. All right, we'll just take that out for now. Yeah, we'll take this out. These are last week's zones. When I do reveal the zones every Thursday to the entire audience, not just passport holders and partners, uh, it's worth jotting them down because as you just saw, the following day, Friday, Sunday night Globex open, Monday on Wall Street, the previous week zones still have uh, quite a bit of what we call carryover effect. Now, what's happened with this zone, 7475, as opposed to price pinging off of it the way we typically see, and this happens sometimes, the zone has become like a center of gravity with price oscillating above and below, consolidating below, above. Now, what looked to be a pretty dramatic move here a moment ago doesn't look so dramatic at all, okay? Remember the concierge trade alert. <clears throat> was to be long 2884. First pop was to 8775. Back below the trigger. Up we go again. And that time we hit 87. Back below the trigger. And here we go again. So we've got one, two, three triggers so far. One thing I'll say about the additional triggers, you won't see the additional triggers on the recap is there's just too many uh, to recap and, and keep it neat and orderly. But with each additional trigger, it typically represents lower risk, higher probability. We have a three-step methodology for setting our step loss. I teach that to every partner, every passport holder. So we're not dependent upon just some fixed number some arbitrary percentage of how much risk we're going to assign to any given trade because each trade is a unique moment in the market. It deserves its own personalized stop loss based on market structure. That's why on the swing trades, in fact, the last batch that we had trigger, I think they triggered last Thursday, but they were issued on Tuesday. So the structure of the market is obviously going to change quite a bit between Tuesday and Thursday. I don't want to use a stop loss on Thursday based on Tuesday's market structure. When it triggers on Thursday, I want to be able to address the current market structure because that will tell me clear as day, plain as everything, anything, plain. Where this, not some guy on TV, not some joker on the internet. But the chart, the market itself saying, yo, put your stop right here. Doesn't mean your stop won't get hit just because you know where to put it. In fact, you hope it gets hit if the market decides to do something other than the next high probability move. Because that's what our methodology tells you and shows you what the next high probability move is. You'll never have to wonder again. When I'm done with you, I'll sit you, I can sit you down in front of any chart, any time frame. Start the clock. You got 10 seconds. Give me a narrative. Bang. It doesn't take imagination. You don't have to have a, a PhD in physics or mathematics. <clears throat> you just simply need to be able to read, understand what our couple of simple indicators are telling you. Look at the framework represented by the weekly zones because that's what that does is it pr it frames price action for the coming week and to have those numbers and to know that <clears throat> before the week even starts well as, as you watch and see i think you'll find it's a little bit powerful all right the dow concierge trade alert last night consider being long 25 9 25 okay 25, 925. 25, 925. Okay. You got it. You got it. Okay. <clears throat> Swing high. Now, on this one, did we dip back below? Yep. So we had a 
we had a trigger that took us up from 25 to 83. I gotta reboot my chart. 25 to 8. Alexa, what's 83 minus 25? 83 minus 25 is 58. Thank you. So a 58 point move. <clears throat> Alexa, what's 58 times 5? This might answer your question. Alexa, stop. Times oh, yeah, it did answer my question. Thank you. It's 290. So it's a $290 per contract move. Price then got back below the trigger by five points. And we now have a swing high up at 25. 989 okay so uh, that's going to be about 295 bucks so a 290 dollar move back below the trigger 295 just remember important prices important areas are almost always tested you're going to hear me say it a lot it really is uh, a cornerstone of our whole methodology everything that we understand about markets and that we the very best to share with and teach you what we do it's not complicated or convoluted it's simple by design we used to be michael and i two of the most complicated convoluted guys on the internet uh and not so much anymore we finally got some clarity <clears throat> we figured out that you know sometimes less actually is more and a lot of times less is just less but there are times when it can be more on the short side last night, your short line in the sand, 25670. Oh. 25670. Oh. Now, these lines in the sand over two days, see, yesterday on the long side, we didn't go very far. We didn't even trigger on the short side yesterday. There was no two sided action. We've had minimalist type moves <clears throat> here uh, today. I mean, those are both tradable. That would certainly meet your daily goal and then some. You know, if you're working on a $100 per contract per day daily goal with the goal of eventually trading, you know, 10, 20 contracts, well, there it is, okay? Uh, it's not dramatic. It doesn't make grown men weep, but I remember we said boring earlier? Yeah. If you want excitement and adventure, go get it somewhere other than in front of a trading platform. All right, the short side again, 25670, 25670. Okay, uh, first swing low was 692. No, that wouldn't be right. 632. I have difficulty seeing this new pop-up window I'm having. <clears throat> so from 70 to 30, that's about 40 <clears throat> Dow points at $5 per point, $200 per contract traded. All right, on the second trigger, we put in a low at 620. So that's 50 Dow points at $5 per point, $250 per contract traded the Russell okay well you know what I didn't switch up the zones here let me do that did I address these already okay this week 25 slash 20 okay above that we've got two six one three five slash two six one four oh Okay, and then below that, <clears throat> below 825, 25330. Now, remember I told you earlier that our Sunday night, that this week we had some very wide-ranging zones. And it meant we would either, you know, <clears throat> be all over the place, have great volatility, or we would find one zone, one area, and we would just kind of do a lot of you know, sideways trading inside of that large range. That has come to pass. The only thing that makes it a little bit difficult is that we're straddling a zone as we do it, okay? Typically, this would be up inside of this. But you can go look at historic charts and see exactly what it looks like 
each and every week. Okay, so we've adjusted those. Let's go to the Russell. <clears throat> Concierge trade alert on the Russell. Consider being long, 1470. Okay, and our swing high was 1480.3. So that's a 10 point move, $50 per point. So that's a $500 per contract move. On the flip side, consider being short at or below 1450 and the swing low. So far, 1447.70. So we'll call it 48, though, so a couple points. $50 a point, $100 per contract traded in Q. Now, what's important is when you have access to the concierge and the Logic 247, either one of them independently, you know, will point out some great trade setups. When you see both of them pointing at the same number, now you really want to kind of set up and pay attention because it usually indicates something pretty important is about to happen in the market. So last night on the NQ, Concierge said, consider being short, 75.67. That's going to be right here. 75.67. Okay. All right. Now, this initial spike down only took us to... What was the number? Better write it down. Short 7567. Let me write that down. Now, those of you that are on the trial, you have access not only to the Logic 247 alerts, you have access to the concierge trade alerts, and you have access to the weekly trading zones. So from 67 down to uh, 59, okay, basically that's eight points. $20 a point, $160 per contract traded. First trigger. Second trigger took us down to $75.50. So that's 17. Alexa, what's 17 times 20? Alexa, what's 17 times 20? 17 times 20 is 340. $340 per contract traded. Now, if you've earned the right, and that's so important that you earn the right to trade 10 contracts, that's a $3,000 plus move, okay? Third trigger, first trigger. Second trigger. Do we anticipate that our alerts are going to trigger multiple times? We do, we do. Okay, uh, now you see how we almost got a fourth one? The price tried to reach up and just get, get above that trigger. <clears throat> Didn't do it. This is not your father's swing trades or alerts of any kind. That's sort of a running joke, but yeah, I'll tell you more about it later. So the swing low here is uh, 75.22. Alexa, 67 minus 22. 67 minus 22 is 45. Alexa, 45 times 20, that's $900 per contract traded. This might answer your question. Okay. 45 times 20x is 900 times x. Okay, very good. So $900 per contract available. That's what the market made available. Again, if you've earned the right to trade 10 contracts, and with us, you earn the right to go live even. You don't just go live right away. You trade in SIM until you're consistently profitable. Once you pass that test, go live with one contract. We then want to see you increase your account balance by $2,000 before you add a second contract. Number of reasons, one of which is that when you add that second contract, you're doing it with profit you earned in the market. From this point forward, if you follow our 2420 blueprint, every contract you add will be added with profit you earned in the market. And if there's no profit, then there's no adding another contract. Anytime you have two days back to back where you do not reach your goal, 
in 10 trades or less. We back out of the live account, go into SIM, you book a mentoring session, and then Michael and I will come. You can book with either of us, both of us. We'll help you troubleshoot what happened. Maybe it was you. Maybe it was just a flat spot in the market. Maybe I can show you on the chart, using our indicators and our methodology, how to see that the market was trying to make up its mind and it wasn't really quite ready for trade at this point. And so, yes, our indicators do highlight what we consider to be picture perfect to the tick entries on every market. What we do is fluid across all markets and all time frames. but perhaps maybe an even more important function of our indicators and methodology is that it will tell you when to stay out of the market. There are times the market is not conducive to trading. Sure, you can still put on a trade and whatever you, whatever results you get are basically gambling results. Okay. We stick to the high probability trade opportunities. Anything you see in concierge or in logic, I, I just, it's my best work. I'm not bragging or anything. I'm just saying, I, I don't have anything else. Uh, that's, that's my whole kit bag. All right. $900 per contract available. Now that's just on the third trigger. Okay. There was profit that could be taken here and here and here. Mark Douglas and trading in the zone. Those that don't know, Mark was a friend of mine before he passed. He's still a friend. I learned a lot from him. One of the things he taught was that you need to learn to pay yourself as the market it makes money available, okay? Multiple contracts. It doesn't mean you should just jump into trading multiple contracts, of course not. SIM, live with one, and then you build your business one step at a time, one contract at a time, always using aggressive risk management. If you don't wanna blow up your account again, you've come to the right place. I'm not saying you can't blow up an account with us because if you work hard enough at it, you can. But if you follow the guidelines, if you follow the rules put in front of you, uh, it doesn't have to happen. Traders all over the world woke up this morning with that knot in the pit of their stomach and wondered, is today the day I blow up my business? I've been killing it for three days, three weeks, three months, three years, but wow, what if it swings the other way today? What if I get wiped out? That's not trading talk. That's gambling talk, perhaps at best. You don't, you don't have to worry. You don't have to burn up brain cycles every day, worrying about the negative what ifs, because everything's been put in place. You don't have to make the mistakes that all of us have made. This is how Michael and I were able to build these stop gaps into our blueprint so that you don't have to suffer the pain and humiliation uh, that so many of us did over and over and over again. Stop the madness. Now look yourself in the mirror and go, self, I'm done. I'm done with the gimmicks. I'm done with the parlor tricks. I'm done with all the sleight of hand and the historical chart and, and doctored up videos. I'm not going to depend on magic anymore because magic hasn't served you well, has it? That secret that nobody wants you to know. How did, how did that work out? It didn't. I know because I bought it. I bought all of them. I didn't know there could be so many secrets. Now I have them all. Hmm. The only secret is there's no secret. That, well, if you want to see, if you, if you got to have a secret, you must learn how markets work. Once you understand how markets work, you can determine what the next high probability move will be. Our methodology, our framework, our indicators, our zones make that task very simple. Trading's not easy. Oh, but it can be simple. Sometimes we won't allow the market to be simple because we think there's got to be more to it, one more indicator, one more filter, one more. We're, man, oh, 
I'm just two mouse clicks away from greatness. I just need that one more thing. That one more thing. It's like looking for a black cat in the dark. It doesn't even exist. You're not going to find what doesn't exist. Anyone who tells you they know with certainty what's going to happen in the market next. They're either lying to you or deluding themselves. Because when God in Genesis founded the heavens and the earth, he decided in his infinite wisdom not to give man the ability to change the past or know the future. There were times he spoke through the prophets about the future, but that's a whole different ball of wax. Okay? As you got God speaking through you, using you, and don't forget what happened to the prophets. They usually killed them. But we cannot change the past. We cannot know the future. Now, we can know what the next high probability move is. Does that mean it always does the next high probability thing? No. No, sometimes it doesn't do what is blatantly obvious would be the proper next step. That could be because of a tweet from the president or some economic report or some kind of uh, geopolitical event on the world stage. But most of the time it does. That's why it's called the high probability thing. And again, when I'm done with you, I'll, I, can, I, can, I, would, I would put money on you, right? I would put money on you. I would sit you down in front of any audience, any trader, anybody, anywhere, show you random charts, random time frames, ask you to deliver me a narrative in 20 seconds what the next high probability move is. And my money says, if you paid attention when I was teaching you, you're going to nail it every time. Again, that doesn't mean it's going to do the next high probability thing, but you know what it is. You feel it. It's, and it's a great feeling. All right. So we did the S&P. We did the Dow. We did the Russell. We did the NQ. Okay, we're up to crude now. Okay. Last night, concierge trade alert on crude said to consider being long 55.85. Okay. That's going to be right about here. Important prices, important areas, almost always tested. 55, 85. Now again, if you have any questions, put them in the chat box. I am happy to answer them. Oh, Wayne, you make an old man blush. That's very kind of you to say. Uh, oh, and yeah, I'm happy to meet with you. Just book your mentoring session anytime you want. Uh, if you don't have the link to the mentoring session page, just uh, ask Valerie. She'll put it in the chat box here for you. Yeah, I, I would love to spend a little time with you, so I look forward to it. All right, 55.85. And we put in a swing high at 56.75. That's a $900 per contract move. If price had gone from 55.85 to 56.85, a $1 move in crude equals $1,000 per contract traded. Was this a $9,000 move for the 10 contract trader? Yeah, it was. But don't you go trading more than your pay grade, okay? Our blueprint is very explicit in the directions step by step how you qualify yourself all along the way. Now, this isn't an honor system kind of thing because we're not going to come and sit at your house and watch you and make sure you're not live when you're not supposed to be. I mean, you'll, you'll have the blueprint. You'll read it. You'll know what you're supposed to do. And then ultimately, it's going to be up to you if you follow it or not. And I pray that you will. Sometimes folks don't follow it the first time out or the second time out. And, you know, then they go, oh, hey, okay, maybe, maybe this time I'm just going to try this, you know, these written out step by step. You know, even, even if you want it, even if you're doing it to prove it wrong, please do it, okay? I think you might be surprised with the results. Uh, the short side on crude was 54.15, and obviously we haven't uh, come in any danger of that triggering, okay?
Now this next, this, this little pop right here, uh, well actually on this candle, all right, that's the one that ran up $900 per contract. And we got back below the trigger. But see, once we got below the trigger on this 30 minute candle, we popped up and closed that 30 minute period at 55, 56.22, so 20, so that's about $350 per contract traded inside of that 30 minute period. And then we get back below the trigger and then we popped up again right here to 56.03. That's about $180 per contract traded, okay? All right, go. And it looks like I already put the lines in for gold. Consider being long at or above 1557. So we've got no trigger up there as of yet. Consider being short at or below 1546. That's right there. And we dropped to 154330. Call it 44. So, well, actually it's 27 ticks at $10 a tick, but it's 270 bucks per contract available. Now, again, I use this analogy. I learned it from Mike Reed, one of my good friends. <clears throat> it's called the prairie dog. If you live on the prairie, I used to love prairie home companion. He, he got it. If there was ever a person a public figure that I was so shocked to find out that he had supposedly been untowards uh, towards women uh, and said and behaved in manners not becoming a gentleman which I really thought he was Garrison Keeler Prairie Home Companion God that was a part of my life for more than 20 years in, in the Phoenix Arizona market it comes on public radio uh, used to every Saturday afternoon four o'clock our time and I looked forward to it I enjoyed it uh, and then all of a sudden there's all these accusations and allegations and he's gone now if he did it shame on him and I don't think he denied it I think he was man enough to just go I screwed up and I'm sorry and he left without you know kicking up a ruckus so Garrison shame on you uh, but for everything else you brought to our lives we thank you so and hopefully you found yourself and you found help and I pray that the rest of your life will be uh, as good to you as you were to us ladies excluded okay let me show you all right now that I watch you through all of them I didn't do bonds and soybeans you can do them yourself have a look here if you want to copy this one last shot five four three Okay, I'm going to switch it back to the logic for just a second. Now, again, no matter where you are in the world, you could be at home, you could be at your office, you could be trapped in traffic on the freeway, you could be in a coffee shop in Amsterdam enjoying a bowl of your favorite whatever, okay? It's on the menu in Amsterdam in the coffee shops. Yeah, it's true. All right, and I might be going there for this carrot bar convention, but I don't, nah, I probably can't. I probably won't take the time off. <clears throat> so we're in week 56, again, last week, that's what happened. Let me scoot way up and show you the previous week, just because we can. Where's my little dealy bop? Okay, week 55. <clears throat> Uh, we had 65 actionable alerts, 13 stopped out, so 20%. Okay. That was week 55. Now in week 56, that's where we are now. I wanted to go back one, one more week. There we go. Okay, so week 54... See, this is one of the lower uh, weeks, and I think the previous week there was 100, and then this week followed up with 48. 
Uh, seven of them were stopped out, 14.6%. Then there was week 55. And I've already showed you the results on week 55. Do we? Now, uh, this is a good talking point for a second. <clears throat> we were stopped out one, two, three, four, five times in a row. When's the last time you got stopped out five times in a row? I hope it's been a long time or never time, but <clears throat> it happens, okay? I mean, it would be haughty of me to think that I could have that many no triggers in a row or that I could have that many profitable in a row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, eight in a row. See, for me to not embrace that I could also get stopped out an equal number of times. And that doesn't mean my system's broken or my methodology no longer works or my indicators are full of it. No, there's an unequal distribution of profitable and non-profitable trades. This is a business based on probabilities. Now, if you're trying to get in enough screen time and enough research and enough study and, and subscribe to all these different feeds of whatnots so that you can become a better trader, you really should book a mentoring session with me, a free one. I won't get in your pocket, all right? Just book a mentoring session. Valerie will give you the link. Let me, let me explain to you what I mean by a business based on probabilities. It will take so much pressure off you. It'll take so much weight off of your shoulders. I promise you. It, it, it'll be well worth the time you spend with me. I won't try to say anything. I never do. Ask anybody that's ever been in a mentoring session with me who's not a partner or passport holder. If it's somebody on a trial, I can feel you as, as we get at the end of our 45 minutes. I can sense you clenching. And you know what I'm talking about. I can sense you clenching on, on the other end of the line because you think I'm getting ready to lower that velvet hammer and try to close you. Uh-uh. Now, I spent the majority of my adult life owning sales companies or being the manager of sales companies. So I haven't forgotten how to close, but you know what? As long as I did it, and pardon me for saying so, as good as I was at it, not having to do that anymore, not having to be that ABC sales guy, always be closing, Ah, oh, such a sweet relief. I don't want to talk anybody into becoming a passport holder or a partner. What I want to do is I want to demonstrate what we have, what we offer, how we're different from others. And then I want you to make a well-informed, well-educated decision as to whether or not what we do is right for you. And maybe it's not, okay? I want you to call that shot with no pressure. Sometimes uh, someone on a trial will book a session with me midweek, right? And they'll actually start to bait me, you know, and try to get me to close them because they, they, they want the other shoe to drop. They want to know how much it's going to cost and they want to be sold. Have you ever been that person? You wanted something, but you couldn't quite convince yourself to you know, break out the wallet, and, and you were really hoping that the sales guy would deliver some kind of clever closing statements that would make the offer just irresistible so that you can go home in good conscience and say, honey, I couldn't resist, right? I just, I won't. I just, I, and that's a choice. And it's in your best interest, especially considering the fact that some of the people who come into mentoring sessions with me for any number of reasons are at a very vulnerable place in their life. Maybe life hasn't gone so well. Maybe the trading hasn't gone so well. Uh, maybe there's been more than a few accounts blown out and there, there seems to be no, no light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, and when there is, it's an oncoming train. And so I have these people who, you know, I'm sure they still got a little room left on their card. I have the ability, I know how uh, to, to get those uh, digits off of that card, right? But man, that's, that's the past. That's an old life. I don't, I don't want that life anymore. 
Uh, if you're on the trial, you do yourself well to go to the discussion group, the trial discussion group, and read through the series of events that happened yesterday. Okay, someone turned to us yesterday who had been struggling with this five years, and while he felt that his situation was very unique and nobody knew his pain, he quickly found out that he was in a room full of people who understood his pain all too well. Because we've all been there. We've all been at the end of our rope, just like he was. The fact that after five years, and I'm sure he knows lots and lots of people involved in the markets, different companies, businesses, vendors, rooms, whatnot. The fact that he chose to turn to us when he was at the end of his rope, man, that meant so much to me. It really did. Because we've worked real hard to be that place, to be that safe harbor from the storm, from all the unscrupulous vendors, and just the nature of the market itself. A place where you can come and let down your guard. You know, we don't allow the enemy in, in our house. So you're only going to be treated with dignity, respect, and kindness. Unless you misbehave and then, you know, one of the sergeant in arms will show you the door in Christian love, right? He won't put you in a full Nelson or anything, but he might shoot you with the holy pepper spray, so be careful. I'm just teasing. All right. <clears throat> If you're on the trial, this is what your alerts are going to look like, okay? The last alert I put out was number 2,574. The next one will be number 2,575, okay? Now, still consolidating right here at this trigger. I'm going to get all the zones updated on all the charts tomorrow, on tomorrow's show. We're going to really focus on the weekly trading zones. If you're on the trial, in the discussion group channel, well, let me explain about that discussion group channel. It goes way back to much earlier in the year. <clears throat> There's probably the results of, I don't know, maybe five or six different trials that we've held no, probably, yeah, about that. But the conversation thread, see, in the alert channel, I'm the only one that can post there. Now, I put the alerts out. I don't want that to get cluttered up. But the companion to the alert channel is the discussion group channel. That's where, if, if I post an alert, you can just immediately, in the discussion group, go, okay, what does that mean? Or what am I supposed, you know, whatever questions you have. And if you scroll up far enough, you'll find the abbreviations that we use. You'll also find, uh, and, and what I'll do is either Valerie or I, after the show today, those important pertinent things that will help you get the most benefit out of your trial. Now, I wasn't even planning to do another trial this week because we just did one last week. I don't typically do uh, more than, usually it's about one a month. Uh, but because of the events that happened yesterday uh, with this very nice young man who you know had been struggling for a period of time and just he, he needed help and because he turned to us for help I really wanted to give him the help he was looking for so I was going to launch just a private alert channel just for him so that he would be able to see the alerts for the remainder of the week along with being in the room that's part of the trial is you come in the room for two hours you learn the basic methodology, learn how to use the indicators. We'll help you download the indicators and put them on your platform, okay? We do Ninja, we do multi-charts. The platform I'm using now <clears throat> is sort of the default gain capital. If your IB clears your business through gain capital, you have access to a platform that looks just like this and our indicators will run on it. Oh, big news, I haven't mentioned this. Uh, within the next week, oh, God willing, our indicators will run on Think or Swim. I've been waiting to say those words for a long time. Can't believe it took me to the end of the show to say it. Uh, the code is written. I've just got to approve the final, uh, the final cut. 
and then I've got to test it. And I have Thinkorswim, so I'll be able to test it. And I know that's going to be beneficial to so many of you. Uh, also, TradingView, also MT4. I've never used MT4, but a lot of people do around the globe, apparently. So, and then, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So, great news, big news. Stay tuned. Let's go to our good word for the day. What do you think? If you got a question now, put it in the chat box. If you think of a question after we sign off, you can find me in Telegram. Just go to Telegram, click on my name, picture, whatever you're offered. <clears throat> and if I'm not at my computer, I've probably got my phone with me. And if I'm busy, when I have time to look at Telegram, it's really the quickest way to get to me. I, I promise you, if you call me, you're going to voicemail. If you send me an email, if you send me an email, it's going to go into an inbox with these 225,354 other emails. So when I say getting a hold of me in Telegram is the fastest way, I really mean it, okay? You'll get my attention right then, right there. Okay. Stay with me for a second. Our good word for the day, today. Talk about God's promise to be with you. <clears throat> what do you say? I'll be with you always. Joshua 1.5 As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. The Bible says, after the death of Moses, the Lord said to Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give them. It's Joshua 1, 1 through 2. Joshua knew Moses was dead. The Israelites knew it too. So why did God remind him? Because Joshua wasn't following a leader. He was following a legend. Be careful of that in the markets, okay? Lots of legends out there. Also a lot of urban myths. Things that sound so reasonable, you just go ahead and write it on the tablet of your heart without properly vetting it. Anything you hear me say, I don't care if I call it a market truth or not. I'm just some joker on the internet. Vet what I say. You know, if I didn't believe it was a, a market truth, I wouldn't say it, but I don't want you to just, I'm, I'm teaching you a life skill here. Just because it's on the internet doesn't mean it's true. Put it through its paces, drag it out in the sun. If it doesn't stand up and salute, then you come back to me and go, hey, pal, this market truth, you, I've been watching this. I don't agree. Well, okay, well, let's look at charts together. Let's, let's see why you don't see what I see. Listen, your findings aren't going to change my belief that it's a market truth because I've already done my due diligence. I've already drug it out in the sun, slapped it around, okay? I need you to do that. Everything I teach you, I want you to own it. Before you write it on the tablet of your heart, I want you to vet it. And then down the road, when somebody asks you, what you believe about a certain thing in the markets and you tell them and they go, well, why do you believe that? I want your answer to be because I know it's true. Oh, well, who told you? Doesn't matter who told me because I checked it out. I know it's true. Power in that. Because in the markets, we're t tossed about you know, by every new breeze that comes in from the south or the north and all these shiny things. Let me touch this and let me trade with that. It leads nowhere. It 
just eats away at whatever time and treasure you have left. I don't know how much you've spent, but the more important question is how much do you have left? Time and treasure. Now treasure, God bless America, if you lose your treasure today and you have your health, you can go out tomorrow, thanks to President Trump, probably find a job and try to get your treasure back. Time's a little different. Okay. God doles that out. Can't go cook up a new batch. Can't go make some more time. You can make more money, but not time. So whatever time each of us has left, I know that we want it to count, right? We want every minute of every day to have meaning and purpose. We want it to address the destiny that God created us, called us to. Because Joshua wasn't following a leader, he was following a legend. Moses had been Israel's security blanket for 40 years. <laughs> Moses is also the first guy <laughs> that ever downloaded files from a cloud and put them on a tablet. <laughs> you didn't know that, did you? Hang on, I'll show you the cartoon. It's kind of cute. I posted it in the Breeze channel yesterday. Now, we have a channel for everything, but our discussion group was sometimes getting a little crowded with talks about, you know, the weather and things of that nature. So we spun off a separate channel called CFRN Breeze for shooting the breeze. Here's some stuff uh, Trader Tim shared with us. Bad laws keep people poor. Uh, Bitcoin, high school dropout, about a thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin at age 12. <laughs> well, he's a happy camper. Here's that fake gold. Here's that thing that they say she said, but uh, Snopes says she didn't say it. Optimus live longer. That's huge. Well, that was our arrival the first time I went to Africa. Where's that little cartoon? Here we go. Here, I'm gonna blow it up. If you wanna take a screenshot, you can. <clears throat> so technically, Moses is the first man to download files from the cloud using a tablet. I thought that was cute. Okay. Now, Moses had been Israel's security blanket for 40 years. He was the definitive go-to guy. He led an entire generation out of 400 years of captivity in a single night. He parted a sea with the wave of a walking stick. He prayed and God rained down bread from heaven every day. When the nation was about to die of thirst, he struck a rock and water flowed forth and filled all their canteens. By any measurement, Moses was a massive success. Why Moses? Was it his ingenuity, his creativity, his genius, his dashing good looks? Was it the swagger in his walk? No, it was the presence of God in his life. The unmistakable presence of God in his life. When somebody meets you, a stranger, do they automatically sense something different about you? I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm just asking, do they? Because the Bible says we are a peculiar people, right? This doesn't mean we got to be goofy, all right, and say weird stuff or wear sackcloth and ashes. But hopefully, hopefully, when a stranger meets us, they will sense there's something... Not just because we're optimistic, not just because we have pep in our step, not just because we have hope. We have something so many in the world don't have. We have a promise of an eternity. Yeah, yeah, the E word, eternity. I checked, that's a long time. It's longer than the Mayan calendar. Hmm. All right. 
now Moses is gone. For Joshua, of course, that was bad news. But the good news was that God wasn't gone. Moses was. God's still here. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, many might say, the Bible scholars in the audience, that's an Old Testament promise. Well, hey, how about this one? 2 Corinthians one twenty. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. 2 Corinthians one twenty. God has promised to be with you and you and you and you and me. Take him at his word. Now remember, faith, you got to have faith. Faith is not what you believe. Faith is what you do with what you believe. Faith, original Greek word, pistis, action verb. We've dumbed that thing down, turned it into a noun. Hey, baby, what's your faith? Hey, are you keeping the faith? No, no, no. The original meaning of faith denoted action. Jesus was an action man. You've probably seen the action figures. Are they sacrilegious? I don't know. But he was always up. He never laid on the couch and watched Springer. He was out pressing the flesh shaking hands, kissing babies, you know, raising the dead, feeding the hungry multitude. Busy guy, busy guy. He didn't let any grass grow under his feet. Now, one more time. Faith is not what you believe. It's what you do with what you believe. So I'll end with this question. What are you gonna do today. Whatever it is, don't put it off. And that's our good word for the day. Thanks so much for tuning in. Whoever you are, wherever you are, may God continue to richly bless you with his mercy and with his grace. And I'll see you at the bell. Remember this, there is no greater return on investment than to see a human life changed and given hope. As always, pray hard and trade safe. Any financial information discussed on this show is simply the opinion of our host, Dwayne Reeves, his co-hosts and guests. To learn more about trading e-mini futures or to take a one-week free trial in our live trading room, call 1-866-928-3310. 866-928-3310. Information discussed on this radio program should not be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Always do your own due diligence and consult with a licensed securities broker or financial planner before making any investment decisions.